Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm going to bring you a threefer. In this video, I'm going to review a wig, tell you about a new human hair retailer that has really good prices, and show you a type of wig cap called a lace frontal that is important for you to know about if you are in the market for human hair wigs. There are lots of different cap types. I do want to do a comprehensive video in the future showing as many of them as I can, but in this one I'm going to talk about a wig cap type that I've never had before and I really like it. So if you want to know more about any of these, then stick around. Brittany from Brushed Hair Wigs actually reached out to me on Instagram to introduce herself. She had been following some of my content for a while and wanted to know if I was interested in learning more about her and her business. And of course I said yes. I'm always interested in learning about new resources, whether it be synthetic wigs, human hair wigs, budget friendly, higher end. I want everybody to see something that calls to them in this wig wearing journey, especially if you're suffering and struggling. And Brittany has a very interesting story. So she started off doing hair. She's been a hairstylist since 2008. In 2017, she had an opportunity to work for Disney styling wigs. How cool is that? In 2018, she actually suffered from a significant postpartum shed. So she lost quite a bit of hair um, after the birth of her child and turned to cheap Amazon wigs to try to deal with it while she got her wits about her and tried to figure out what to do. At that point, she started to research human hair wigs and honestly, after talking with her, I can just see the wheels turning in her head. She has all of this hairstylist experience. She worked for Disney and got introduced to wigs there, suffered from hair loss, and knew that somehow she could marry all of these experiences to create something that will help others. And that's actually how Brushed Hair Wigs was born. Now, Brittany is a relatively new wig artist. This is a, a really new business for her. So right now, she's fairly limited in the pieces that she carries, and that's by design. She really wants to get good at some things before she branches off and starts carrying a lot of different options. So for right now, she carries luxury Brazilian hair pieces. And just for those of you new to wig wearing, Brazilian hair doesn't mean that it came from Brazil. It's actually a hair type. And we'll talk about the hair on this wig in just a little bit. Um, and so she offers Brazilian, luxury Brazilian hair wigs, and she basically has two cap styles right now. They're both lace frontals. Again, I'll talk about that in a bit. And they do not have ear tabs. So for those of you looking for a wig, if you have bio hair that you can blend on the sides with your wigs like I do, then these will be just fine for you. You don't need ear tabs to wear wigs successfully. But for those of you with total hair loss, please note, she does plan to carry caps with ear tabs in the future, but right now she doesn't. And you really do need some sort of ear tab if you suffer from total hair loss because or you've buzzed your hair completely off because you won't get as good of coverage here on the side without having some bio hair there just a little disclaimer for you guys but other than that she has all colors and because she is a professional stylist and a really excellent colorist she is actually also able to do some custom colors as well which I think is a huge win for us wig wearers Let's talk about the piece I'm wearing because this is actually a stock color that she carries. This wig is named Blake and oftentimes with these human hair retailers, if a wig has a name and it's a stock piece, the name is actually refers to the color, not the style. So on her website, you will see Blake under the pre-order section and that's essentially this color palette. Now, um, Basically, this is a natural blonde balayage with a front money piece, which I am a sucker for. I absolutely love money pieces and lighter right here at the front. And it has uh, low lights that are a soft, I'm looking at my notes here, I don't want to get this wrong, soft neutral level six with blonde level nine kind of highlighted through and on the ends. Just for those of you new to wig wearing, or maybe you have synthetic wig experience and you're now looking into human hair, the color codes for human hair are not the same as the color codes for synthetic wigs. I have no idea why they're different, but they are different. So on the human hair color code list, 
it goes, I believe, from a one to a 10. So a 10 is the lightest blonde, and then obviously a one is black. Whether or not the wig and the blonde is ashy or warm or yellow or more white will depend more on the toning of the wig, not necessarily the code. So this has nine, which is a little bit more neutral. It looks a little warm in direct light, a little more ashy in indirect light. So this is Blake. That's the color code. Let's take a look at Blake from all sides. The hair on this piece is stunning. It is soft, it is silky, it is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous hair. Let's take a look at that movement once again. Now I will tack on a short little video at the end so that you can see this piece air dried. It dries with a gorgeous, gorgeous wave. I did put some curls in this one. I've worn this one three times now and I did put some curls in it after I filmed that video with the wave. They have largely react, uh, relaxed at this point because I've worn it and I actually wore it in a ponytail one day and I will tack a picture on the end showing you that as well. This went up beautifully in a ponytail. So if you are looking for a piece that maybe air dries a little bit wavy, it's not a super tight wave, but a little bit wavy, has gorgeous hair texture, takes a curl well, Brazilian hair texture is a great one to consider. And like I said earlier, that's the type of hair texture that she carries. Now two unique things about this piece that I've never experienced before and why I'm really excited to give you this three for uh, video is because this piece has a 150% density. I'm more used to the, the what's considered the normal density of 130 or 120 to 130, which is more of a kind of a natural, no, not super dense. thick. It tends to look a little bit thinner on the ends. That's what 120 and 130 density will get you. In 150 density, what I'm noticing on this piece, it's really natural at the front. None of this is heavier than you would typically find, but the back is super, super thick. Now the Blake she has currently available on pre-order is 130 density. So it's not going to be quite as thick or as full as this one. It's gonna be more like the natural density that many of us are used to who've purchased human hair wigs in the past. But if you're looking for something with a thicker, fuller density, you can get 150 density from her. Currently she carries both because she wants to see what's going to sell the most so that she can carry in stock the ones that are most popular and she's assessing that right now. She's gotten a number of requests for thicker, fuller hair. So that's why she has the 150 density as well. I think that's really interesting and something that I don't think most of us realize. And quite honestly, if you're looking for va va voom hair, having all of that extra hair back there it feels, I don't know, like supermodel hair, super, super luxurious. A lot of women will get extensions in because they want their hair to be fuller. And this is what that makes me think of. Like I said, I wore, I've worn it in a ponytail and it went up beautifully into a ponytail. So I definitely think something like this is gonna have a lot of really, really fun styling options. Now let's talk about this cap. So like I said, this is considered a lace frontal. When you're looking at human hair wigs, there are multiple different cap types out there. One is lace frontal, another is lace closure, and then you'll find hard fronts and, and other variations of these. But let's talk about the difference between a lace frontal and a lace closure. A lace frontal means that the lace is all down the front. This one has lace that goes well beyond the ears, all the way back to the cap back here. Why is that important to know? When you have a lace frontal, generally you have to adhere that lace to get it to lay flat. Maybe not in the front, and I'll show you what's been added to this wig and what's often added to lace frontals to help that front to lay flat. But if you want to style a lace frontal, like up in a ponytail or even in a half up, half down, or sometimes even to tuck it, you have to adhere the lace that goes all the way down because there's no tension on it. I'll show that to you in just a moment. What's different about these pieces is they do not have ear tabs. and 
honestly, I love that this wig does not have ear tabs. Now I do have a little bit of bio hair here at the temples. And when I pull that out to blend, it looks so natural. And I have found in lace frontals that I've had that had ear tabs, it was a real challenge for me on the sides here because the lace went all the way down. It had that ear tab, so I couldn't cut it back as far as I typically would want to with a wig like this. And because I have this bio hair, it made it really challenging to adhere it at the temples. But if you don't have bio hair, you definitely want to look at a wig that has ear tabs, even if it's a lace frontal, because you won't have that extra coverage at the sides here. So I hope I didn't just confuse you. Lace frontals can have ear tabs. They can have no ear tabs. And the difference between a closure, which typically has lace that's either four inches or five inches, and we're talking human hair wigs right now, is that a closure, the lace is attached to the cap, which gives it tension, which allows it to lay flat and be glueless. A frontal doesn't have that tension because it's not attached to the cap until the way, way back. And therefore, you may have to adhere it. Now, the lace front on this is phenomenal. She did such a good job. That's the parting space. I didn't ask her, but my guess is this wig started as a 613 blonde. Oops, I just started having a hot flash. I'm going to start to get shiny. Whew, it just hit me all of a sudden. I think she started with a 613 blonde on this one. And the reason I think that is because you can kind of see where she took the rooting almost up to the knots, but not quite. What that means for you, if she is if you're gonna get a blonde piece that she's gonna add some low lights, add some darker root, this means she doesn't have to bleach the knots because all of the hair, including the knots, have already been bleached to a 613 blonde. And bleaching knots can weaken them. But if you bleach the hair first and then knot it, that's a little different. That also gives you a really realistic front hairline, as you can see, with no visible knotting. For people who aren't familiar with human hair wigs, a little bit more education here. Wigs can come with the knots bleached or the knots unbleached. If you're going to wear a darker piece or if you're going to have rooting and the knots aren't going to be bleached, you typically have to use some sort of makeup to hide those knots. And on this one, you don't have to do that. Now let's talk about this cap. So when I, first of all, I cut the lace back a little too far. That was my mistake. So I'm having trouble getting it to lay flat right here because I cut it back too far. What I do is I just dab a little bit of it stays or other adhesive right here and that handles it fine and the lace lays perfectly flat. So the fact that if you see it lifting there, that is not a product of Britney's wig, this is a beautiful wig, it's because I was not cautious and I cut that lace back too far. Just a warning for you, if you do cut the lace back too far on your pieces, what can happen is it might not lay flat. Oftentimes that's easily fixed with just a little bit of adhesive or like even a stronghold hairspray sprayed on the hairline and let it dry. So I just wanted to mention that. Let's talk about this lace. So frontal. here is what I mean by lace frontal. Do you see this? This goes all the way back to the back. So all of this is lace. All of this is parting space. Oftentimes with a lace frontal, you'll see the measurements 13 by four or 13 by six. That first measurement, 13 inches, is the length of the lace in the front. 13 inches means it's beyond your ears. Four or six inches back just means that's all of the parting space that you're going to get to the back. And this gives you so much styling flexibility. Now this is a closed wefted cap. And as you can see, these wefts are super close together because it's a higher density. We've got combs here, a comb right at the top here, and a comb in the back. If you don't have much bio hair like I don't, you know, I buzz my hair except for this stuff to blend, which I know looks silly, but it works for me. Um, the combs, you won't use them, but they won't bother you. You can always cut them out if you don't want them. I usually leave them. I don't even notice them. We have hook adjusters so that you can tr make this cap a little bit smaller if you'd like. This though is what I was mentioning earlier about one thing that can be done on a lace frontal to help put some tension on that front lace so that you don't have to glue the very front of it. 
When a strap is added to a wig like this, it can often be called glueless. If you see glueless and lace frontal, you can assume that there is a strap added to it. Now, the strap she put on mine is just a, a normal strap, it's sewed in. She did reach out to me after she saw my post on Instagram to let me know that most of her wigs actually come with a removable strap. That's really handy because not everybody likes the strap. Or if you're going to fully adhere the wig, maybe you don't need the strap. I don't mind the strap, it works great, but a uh, removable strap just means that they're, you're able to, it's got like the bra strap, hook and eye closure on either side, and you can take the strap out if you want. I strongly recommend getting a strap on a wig that has a 13 inch lace front. It helps tremendously with adding that tension. So if you've never tried it, I would recommend trying it. The worst thing that can happen is you won't like it and you wanna cut it out, but that is, the cap. It's a beautiful cap. It's a very, very comfortable cap as well. All right, so let's put this wig back on so I can show you how to put a wig on that has a strap and then let's talk about fit. So remember we've got the strap. I take the wig and I rest it on my forehead. I grab the strap and I pull it back down behind my occipital bone. Then I pull the back over it. It's really easy, but it can take a little bit of practice at first. I remember the first wig I got with a strap. I was super confused. It was a challenge, but just practice. It really does get a lot easier. I really love these straps. I just love how they give the wig some security. And let me, as I'm talking, you can see how I get the wig situated. So then I just take a rat tail comb and I pull out my hair on the sides that will help me to blend since there are no ear tabs. I just love, love no ear tabs on wigs. I really, really do. There, just like that. Now fit. I find lace frontal wigs to run big. I've had a few and they all fit me really big. The strap really helps with that, but I always have to wear a wig grip with a lace frontal. I don't know what it is. A part of it's not having tension all around the front, I'm sure, but for whatever reason, I do find them to run big. Now this is her medium cap. She does carry small, she does carry large, but I do feel as though this one is more of an average large. That's how it's fitting me. And with no ear tabs, that's another part that's a lot more forgiving on these caps. When you have ear tabs, if the wig is too big or too small, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that lace is out flat, it didn't get folded in. If they're too big or too small, those ear tabs make it really obvious and really unforgiving. Without ear tabs though, this could run a little bit big and I'm gonna be fine. I did cut that lace back quite a ways. So here's the lace and you can see it came down further, but I didn't like the way that looked with my bio hair, so I cut it back further. That's the other beauty of wigs like this is you can customize that lace front to work for whatever hair situation, whatever head size situation you have going on. So I would work with her if you're thinking of purchasing a wig on cap size that would work best for you, but all my measurements are in the description and I would say this is running just a little bit big. I don't have a ton of extra cap up here. It's really how it like secure it is on my head and with a wig grip, it's perfectly secure. I don't have to worry about it. Like I said, I wore this up in a ponytail, a full ponytail actually, to work last week. And with a wig grip on, that is perfectly, perfectly fine. It worked great. All right, this is long enough. Let me summarize my thoughts. Brittany from Brushed Hair Wigs is wonderful. I love her heart for why she got into this business. Please keep in mind, she is new and she's still learning, but her prices are really excellent. In her note to me, she said she is her goal is to keep the wigs she sells as affordable as possible. And right now, the price range is about 550 to 1300, depending on length, cap structure, and density. And I will tell you guys, those prices are really incredible. If you've priced out luxury human hair wigs that aren't being sold by a budget retailer, you're generally looking at 1500 to 2500 so a, a top end price of around 1300 give or take you know her cost couldn't rise as well so remember I'm filming this in July of 2023 if you're watching this in September or October things could be different but that's her goal and I really appreciate that I really want 
Whether you're looking for synthetic or human hair, I want all women to be able to find wigs that will work for them. I love that she's got um, the colorist experience so she can really work with you on color. She will have some stock pieces, she will have some pre-order pieces, and she can do a custom for you. And she'll just, she'll consult with you and work with you on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for another resource when it comes to human hair wigs, please check out Brushed Hair Wigs. I will link it in the description. I will actually put a link to the pre-order of this piece as well in the description. And I'm always happy to answer questions, but I really think this is one to keep your eye on. Um, I think she's gonna do really great things. So thanks for watching, you guys. I'm gonna get outside, show you this color outside. I'll tack on the air dried. The lace is uncut in that video because obviously you have to cut the lace on this. There's hardly a human hair wig out there that you don't have to cut the lace on. And uh, a little bit of a clip of me wearing it in a ponytail so that you can see all the options. Thanks for watching. If you stuck around till the end, I hope you learned something today. If you did, leave it in the comments. What did you learn today that you didn't know before you watched the video? I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, everyone. I just want you to see this color outside. All right. As promised, this is how this piece air dried. So I washed it. I've not cut the lace on it yet. I always wash a brand new human hair wig before I cut the lace. I want to make sure the hair washes up well and all of that. So that's my recommendation. But here is how she air dries. You can see really pretty wave. I did nothing at all to enhance this wave. I just washed her up, brushed her out. I did, right when I hung it, I did just go like this a little bit. And then I hung it on my mannequin head to dry. I have one with holes in the top and I just let it air dry. This I did actually even forgot to dry the cap. I normally dry the cap, but I forgot to do that last night and so here you go. If you're looking for something that dries with a nice wave, this type of Brazilian hair has a really, really pretty soft wave.